This previously recorded webinar was created for the Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative. Hello, and thank you for joining me on the second video of Groups and Collaborations. My name is Lauren Burleson, and in this tutorial video or webinar, we are going to be reviewing what Collaborations is and how you can incorporate it into your Canvas course and have your students engage with it. Again, this is a part two, so there's this is two of two uh, video. And if you did not watch the first one, uh, which is completely on groups, this one is on collaborations, this video might be a little bit confusing. So I would suggest returning to uh, video one, which will be uh, in the description below. So that way it makes more sense. And then you can come back here and review collaborations in Canvas. While part one is in the description, the presentation or PDF guide is also provided for you in, um, in a link below. So make sure to check that out before we get into the presentation. All right, so this is part two, and we will be going over Canvas collaborations. What are collaborations? How do we create a collaboration? And then how do groups, as we discussed before, go with collaborations? So groups and collaborations. Okay, so what is a Canvas collaboration? A collaboration is a tool that allows multiple students to work together on the same document at the same time. It's very similar to like a Google Doc that's shared, but you don't have to share it. It's already shared with you thanks to the instructor. Uh, then a collaborative document, they are saved in real time, meaning um, any changes made by the user will be automatically and immediately in, or visible to everyone that is attached to that document. So this is really great for, um, let's say, teachers who are working on papers with a student. They can easily collaborate that way. Um, or for students who are in groups, uh, they are synced to the same document in Canvas, and from there, they can create um, and collaborate in one specific document. What is the benefit now? Because, you know, we have all these other tools that do this very similarly. Well, students can work on the same Google document without having to share or make a copy. And this, for me, during distance learning was huge. Um, and it just cuts down the time. So a lot of it of the work is up front when you're creating a collaboration, but then it is seamless and so easy for the students to access and and get to without having to do all of those clicks, as we know. So the document is easy to access and the teacher has a lot of control, which is another benefit. And it's it, I, as the teacher, can access the document super easily as well in Canvas without having to be synced or shared with that document too. So I'm on my homepage and I just want to make sure, see how down here it has a little I through and it like a slash through an I. It says disabled, not visible to students. So if you're just doing this not through groups, you want to make sure in your settings, you go to navigation and then you want to scroll down to where the it says drag items here to hide them. We don't want that one to be hidden for right now. So here's collaborations and we're going to take it. Oop and drag it or you can even move it i'm just doing it this way da, da, da. and i'll put it below people there we go so now when i go down and i click save 
it will now be over here and my students have access to view it. So let's click on it. I'm having a lot of loading issues as you guys can see. <laughs> okay, so here is collaboration. So it says getting started with collaborations and all I have to do to get one started is click this plus button. So there are a couple ways in which you can create a collaboration. The easiest way is to actually go to collaborations in the course navigation bar. So you open up any course, click on collaborations, and then you're going to select the blue button, the blue plus button that says collaborations. Then this window will pop up. So you're gonna choose what kind of document you want, whether that's a sheet, a document or a presentation, that's up to you, uh, the teacher. And then, or even not just the teacher too, the student can create one too. Uh, then you'll name the document and add a description. So group project one assignment, and then you can describe what the project is. Then select students you wish to add into the collaboration document. So then I would just select you know, whoever is in the course, I would sync them, choose as many people as I want to be in this one collaboration together, and then I would click submit. Once you click the collaborations button to create one, you want to select the students, these are my colleagues, names. Then you have options to create a document, a spreadsheet, or a presentation. And all of these are blank. Then I'm going to give this collaboration a name and then click Submit. Once I've created an, a collaboration, what will appear is this. So you'll have a link to the document. So you can see the title is Group Project Assignment 1. If I click it, it will open it. Um, and students get to see the same thing. So um, to open it, we just would click there and then note to teachers and students, this is completely blank. But as the teacher, you can copy and paste any text or images that you wish your students to view. So that is really nice, I think personally, because let's say if you want them to be working on some sort of group activity or group worksheet, you can copy and paste that in with all the directions for them to complete. And then if I want to, or um, if a teacher needs to add a student to the document later, let's say they were absent, came in late, um, you can add by clicking the edit button and add any additional student or even instructor, if there's like multiple teachers, um, to this collaboration. So it's not like once you've assigned it, it's too late, you can always remove people, you can add people, and that's a really nice feature. So from a student perspective, here is how you can easily access the collaboration within a group. So I am currently in a group and I set up a collaboration, so I'm gonna go to that group by clicking from the dashboard over to the global navigation bar, groups, here is my group name. And then you can see I have an announcement here. I can look at the people, but I'm gonna click collaborations here and you can see here is my assignment. I click it, I open it and request denied. <laughs> Okay, so I have logged into the correct Gmail account, so you always need to make sure you're in the correct Gmail. Uh, so let's click on it and you'll see now this is the copy or the document that is automatically shared with everyone. So I don't have to come over here and do file you know, make a copy or I don't have to, sh you know, share it with other people. It is already shared because of the collaborations settings within Canvas. But if I want to edit it, I can click this little pencil button. I can also delete it or I can create a new one and anyone. So like anyone in the group 
can start a collaboration and the collaboration doesn't have to be with every single group member uh, so they can pick and choose who they want to collaborate with in that group so that could be like delegating jobs within a collaboration um, or group work uh, or of course everyone can be in the group and have access to everything and the teacher the person who is over the group will always have access to everything all the group work so while in canvas um, you can access collaborations as a teacher on the global um, not global, excuse me, course navigation bar. And students can as well, but that is not group specific. So within a group homepage, the teacher and the student can also create a collaboration document. So that's where a lot of the creation process for a group can occur. So if you have, let's say, if you're in class and you have paper directions on what they are to create on a digital, you know, document, that gives them a lot of creative freedom digitally to set up the collaboration with their group. And they're already here, they're already like synced and attached, which is really nice. Um, so one thing I like to do here is when they create a collaboration, I don't, they don't have to really even submit anything. So I can actually go into each group, click on collaborations, open that up and look at it myself that way without having the students having to submit any document. So if you're like really focusing, let's say like on, um, multiple drafts of something that's really nice and then they could submit their final draft as a group to a, a separate assignment that's a really great tool in canvas um, and how you could complete that so now i have my web design this is a collaboration that i have between me and the two students that are in this group but as you can see it's blank so to work around this blank document, you can actually add, copy, and paste slides into here. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so let's say this is the outline of the Google Slides that I want to use. Um, I could have questions on here too, um, but this is just like the presentation and all of the slides that I want them to have. So I'm going to copy this then go back here, click on the document, and now what I'm going to do from here is actually delete this first slide and paste. So now the format or the layout of the slides it is there for my students to access. So as you can see, we are, all share this so the students don't have to make a copy. They don't have to share it with their group members. All they have to do is enter their group and click web design and of course this will pop up for them and then if, from there they can either sub you can create a submit assignment page for them or um, from there they can just leave it there and you can grade it by going into each group. Groups and collaborations are amazing because students do not need to make a copy or share. I think the biggest benefit is there's less clicks. For the teacher, there might be a lot of work up front in creating all of this, but for the student, it's super easy, quick, and fast for them to access the group work or the assignment or collaboration. Uh, so they complete this together as a group. They can submit if you want to create a separate submission or they don't have to. <laughs> so you could just leave it as it is and the teacher still has full access to it. Um, and with that, I, I really felt when I was doing distance learning, this was amazing because of the confusion of all of the steps a lot of the times my students would have to take to access the work and I'd have to like keep showing step by step but with this it was like two clicks and they were in the assignment as a group together so I, I felt like this was amazing when I wanted them to work 
as a group virtually. <laughs> um, and because I felt like overall that was a really big struggle was how can I create a path for my students to engage with each other behind their computer. So that was a great benefit to this, but of course it doesn't have to be digital, you know, or, or not digital, distance learning. It can also be hybrid teaching or blended teaching where you have all the students in the classroom with their Chrome, Chromebook computer. So great tool to have, and I hope that you are able to use it and enjoy it as much as I did. Okay, so here are my groups. These are uh, three different periods or three different sections of students. You can see all of this amount of students assigned. So I had five to um, a group, but some of them have four because of, you know, the uneven numbers in a class. And so I can just click here and go to visit group. From there, of course, the students would see their Google Meet link announcement. And then their collaboration is the next page that they would go to and open this document. Now, this is what we used last week. So you're going to see student comments, but you're not going to see student names at all for FERPA. So we have, um, we learned about magnets. And so I, all I did was ask them questions. They had to watch this video that I made and then answer um, the questions as a group within their Google Meet. Um, so they all watched them together and then they filled out this document together and it was so cool and so quick. I was really surprised by how easy it was for them. So you'll notice that I did have to copy and paste into 17 different um, groups or collaborations this same document. But even though the work for me was all up front and it did take a little while, I want to say, with adding the Google Me and the document, um, it took me probably about 20, 30 minutes. Um, even though it took me that long, uh, it was so fast in my class. Like the Google Meet and having them collaborate together and answer the questions, accessing everything was so, so quick for them. And that's really all that matters, especially with this distance learning I wasn't troubleshooting trying to help them find where the document was or how um, troubleshooting like them sharing it with each other, making sure that they all had the document shared to their group. Um, it was just so quick and easy. Um, so yeah, so just another example here. Thank you so much for joining me as we discussed groups and collaborations today. I hope that it is something you try out and use um, in your classroom, whether again, you're digital hybrid or in the classroom in person. And it is just a great way to bring engagement online. And if you have questions, I will be leaving my email address up for you. Feel free to contact me that way, or if you can always contact me through social media, just search up Canvas Queen and you can direct message me from there. Groups and discussions are really great together and I really do hope you try it out. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.